When you think Canva, you think graphic design platform, but Canva has recently added the ability to do AI coding. And in this video, I'm gonna show you six different projects that I tested it with, and I'm gonna to explain to you what works well and what doesn't. And by the end of this video, you're gonna be an expert on Canva coding. As always, I'll have a link in the description below for you to see everything you need, but we are on canva.com slash AI slash code. We have this code for me enabled and we are going to insert a prompt. G based digital celebration card with modern animations. Start with the example birthday card for AI Dana featuring confetti animations, a soft blue to pink gradient background and interactive elements that trigger when clicked. So we are going to hit submit and this will take a bit of time. So we're gonna let it run and we'll be back and we're gonna look at the other projects in the meantime. The first one I tried was this quiz. So it's an interactive biology quiz and it's going to make it, we can click version one, you can see how it looks. So it has this explorer. Let me just move myself over so we can have this explorer over here. So we have easy, medium, hard. We can start the quiz. We can answer questions. It looks pretty good, not bad. But as I went further down, I said, can we make the design more kid friendly? So you can see how it looks here. This is version one. And now this is the version two. And this is the more kid friendly version. You can see the colors. We can see how it looks, but it is kind of glitchy. So I said, hey, can we try again? And we have version three, which is even more colorful, but this time it is functional. And you can see how it looks kind of fun and it works and it's colorful. It's pretty good. As you could have guessed, Canva is very good at graphical design. And these examples will get harder and better as we go through them. And if you enjoy AI content, don't forget to click the subscribe button because I cover different apps, news, tools, everything you need to know on a daily basis. So let's continue. On my next test, I want to try the Angry Bird prompt. So if you don't know, on the Franklin A website, I have something called AI Code Test. I test different pieces of prompts and I track different large language models and what output they give on the first try. So on Canva, I tried the same exact prompt and we can see what it came up with. Here is version one. So if we hit play and we select the level, it just says level complete instantly because everything is falling. So not a great first try. If we keep scrolling down, I said, hey, the stuff just falls. I want to fix the physics. We can go down version two and same problem. And I said, hey, everything just falls. So the game doesn't end now, but it just falls and I continue to prompt it back and forth and it is a complete failure. So after a while, I kind of gave up at the end of version four because it was non-functional. So it sort of works, but not great. Like it works the first you can see it. it's not great. As I was saying before though, where it really shines is through graphical design. So this next example is absolutely mind blowing. We have a prompt here, which says basically build your own order system, interactive menu, and it came up with this as its version one. So we have our different things. We can expand or hide the order details and we can customize and add items. So we can say, hey, we want to add Parmesan and that's going to add an extra dollar and we can see what it looks like. So pretty good start, but here is where it gets crazy. I said, add pizza to the menu and make the pizza builder interactive. So it shows the image of the base of the pizza as you would add toppings and it visually shows you the pizza. So I just want it to be interactive and it's going to create SVG representations of the pizza and toppings. So that means there is no images. It is doing this purely through code. So here is the updated version. So we still have our appetizers and nothing changes there. It's pretty normal. But when we go to pizza and we want to build a pizza, so we want to build this pizza here, we have our pizza at the top. And if we picked medium, large, it does nothing. It just changes the price. The crust is changes a little bit. You can see the change, but where it gets really fun is we can change the sauce. So we have barbecue, tomato, we have white. And then if we add pepperoni, here's our pepperoni. If we add mushrooms, here are mushrooms. So it does a really good job at creating this interactive pizza builder. Up next, I want to figure out its ability to generate content for different things that it codes. So here it's an interactive historical timeline and it starts from agent civilization and it goes forward. So we can kind of scroll down. We have version one and here is what it looks like. So we have all the different parts of our interactive timeline. So it is not bad. It could be a little bit nicer, but off a single prompt, I'm going to give it some credit. It's pretty decent. 
we have these different buttons here that don't really do anything. And then we have this little timeline bar, which affects up here. So if we scroll next, it goes next. As I went forward, I said, can we make it about the history of computers instead and make it modern looking? So it did a whole update with computers. So here is the modern looking computer version and you can see it has adjusted the cards. It has updated information about computers and it has this little learn more button, which again is not functional because it only did what we told it to do, which was the timeline. And we even have the AI revolution. So early computing history, we can say these different buttons, early computing history, and it has information here, and then navigate our timeline even has this little animation one. So if we start it further back, it'll just kind of animate through as you can see. So maybe you want to have your website set up where it does it automatically one to the next. You can do that as well. This example here is pretty cool as well. So we are going to create an interactive 3D space exploration game. So you can read the whole prompt if you want, but we're gonna just scroll down. We have our version here and it first prompts and tells you how to use it. So there's this whole entire thing about how to use it, educational features, and we can hit start. So we can adjust the speed, which I find is broken, but we can pan around. We can see all the different stuff. Let me, let me expand this out by bringing my screen back to normal size, but here you can see what it looks like. So you can see the earth, the moon, we can see speed, so it's not really moving. We can adjust the planet scale. We can adjust the distance scale. So this is the actual distance. You can see how much bigger it is if we scroll out, which is pretty cool. Like that looks really, really neat. Uh, we have labels, so we can enable or disable. We can enable or disable the orbits. And if we do that, I don't know where the planets are anymore because they are very small in comparison to the sun. And then there's realistic mode, which will make it go around. We can even reset. We can explore different things. So that is pretty good off a single prompt. I did try some different things to basically say, hey, try again, see if it failed different ways or what would happen if I kept saying try again. Honestly, the speed thing never did fix. I should have really said, hey, the speed thing's broken, but I was just curious to see. And finally, on to our happy birthday is what we started with. So it says the birthday card has several interactive elements. Click the cake or gift to trigger a confetti animation. So we can click the cake and confetti pops up. Hover the balloons or cake to see the animation. So we can hover these and they are animated, which is kind of cool. Click the arrow button in the corner to flip the card to see the special message. So if we click that, it says, Dear AI Dana, on your special day, we celebrate this amazing person you are. May your day be as wonderful as you make everyone else's. Here's another year of growth, learning, and amazing achievement. With love, your friends. So this is a tire animated card that it just made for us. We have this button here called use in a design. So we can actually click that and this will bring up the Canva that you are used to where you can add everything that you want, all your different elements. What is really cool is there's this published to the web. So we can click that and now we can adjust the URL, we can hit publish, and it will actually make a link that you can access and share out with friends. So we can hit view website and boom, now we have our happy birthday AI Dana with all the features that you just saw. So whatever apps you make in Canva AI code, you can actually turn it into a website pretty quickly. If you have it generating code and here I said, make this nicer, you can actually see coding for you what line number it's on and what code it is doing. The only way I've seen for you to actually see the code is if you hover over where it has a response. So I'm hovering over here, it's version one. There's this little thing that says create a doc. So that is going to open up a Canva link and it's gonna say, give your doc a title and it says exactly what it's gonna do. And it gives you the code here as to what it generated. But that is the only way I found for it to give you code other than that and this here where it's generating lines where you don't really see it anywhere else. I hope you enjoyed this video on Canva AI coding. It is a really powerful tool for or design and if you pull the design out and then you use another tool that's good at coding like Gemini you can combine the two to make some really cool looking things let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below don't forget to leave a like on the video it tells the algorithm you enjoy this type of content and you want to see more of it and if you enjoy this content don't forget to subscribe because I cover the latest and greatest AI content you don't want to miss out thanks for watching I'll see you in the next one AI tools. to be